Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming tonight. My name is Lauren Farberman, and my pronouns are she, her. I was the team lead for the screening circle group this semester. I stand up here with 11 incredibly talented young professionals who I now call friends, and I've had the privilege of working with them this semester. We're all graduating seniors, which feels crazy to say. And with graduation less than two weeks away, it feels incredibly full circle that for our final semester as SDSU students, we got to spend it executing a PR campaign for our own school, the School of Journalism and Media Studies. <laughs> yeah, give it up for the School of JMS. So working with our client, the school's brilliant director, Dr. Temple Northup, we learned of some of the school's DEI initiatives. There he is, <laughs> and in the flesh. <laughs> So the school has created a goal of increasing feelings of inclusion and belonging in the major, as well as an increased sense of diversity. From this goal, something called Screening Circle was born. So whoever said they didn't know what Screening Circle was earlier, you're about to find out. Screening Circle is an event that showcases media, television series, and films that highlights and really gives a voice to traditionally marginalized and diverse community members. On March 16th, we held the third Screening Circle where we showed an episode from the HBO series, We're Here. We're Here uplifts voices of the members of the LGBTQ plus community from smaller towns. In our case, we showed an episode that was shot not too far away in Temecula. The show also features drag queens, so it really sheds light on the drag community as well. Greater diversity in the media isn't just important. It's imperative that we push for change. Research shows that when traditionally marginalized groups are shown in the media in a positive light, this actually has the power to dismantle harmful stereotypes. This is especially important for the younger generations as they are the ones that are consuming media in such high volumes. So I want everyone to take a second and look around the room. Take a second, look around, look at the people, really take in what you're seeing. Would you be surprised to learn that as of 2019, 88% of the PR industry is white. I would say I'm surprised, but frankly, I'm not. There is still a tremendous amount of room for growth in terms of diversity in the professional landscape. And this issue is not just in PR. Let's look at Hollywood, for example. In Hollywood, about 90% of both writers and showrunners are also white. So this issue is really widespread in all of the media um, divisions. So as we all know, society has increasingly become more accepting of the LGBTQ plus community, yet they still face discrimination in their daily lives. Hello, my name is Adriana Villa. I'm the team's HR manager and my pronouns are she, her. So the Pew Research Center actually found that, the, that LGBTQ plus community members, they do understand that society has become more accepting, yet they still note that they do face this discrimination. For example, they are rejected by friends and family members, they're harassed in the workplace, they're rejected by places of worship, and they're even victims of physical and emotional abuse. In fact, members of the LGBTQ plus community are four times more likely to be victims of violent crimes, four times. So the School of JMS is always a safe space for everyone and they, every event and every classroom knows this, but they were yet to host an event to really embrace the LGBTQ plus community and let them know that they were free to express themselves here. So the We're Here screening circle was a tactic to let these community members know that they were safe to be in all JMS events and classrooms, not only at this event, but every day in the JMS community where they're free to be themselves. We started our campaign by conducting primary research to see how much students at JMS felt like they were a part of a community and if they felt represented. I'm Bethany Zarazinski, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm on the research and logistics teams. We sent out a pre-campaign survey to our students asking them how much they agreed with statements regarding their knowledge and attitude towards JMS. We used a five-point Likert scale with one being strongly disagree and then five being strongly agree. We were also able to compare some of our data to what was found prior to last semester's screening circle. First, we found that students had a good amount of knowledge about what extracurricular programs that JMS has, but they don't use them enough. And as you can see, this did not change much since before last screening circle. And secondly, we found that students had a really positive attitude towards JMS, but however, students who are a part of the LGBTQ community and allies both said that they had less positive attitudes towards the school. 
However, students did notice that JMS is making an effort to change that by promoting events like Screaming Circle that address issues on these topics of diversity and belonging. And for a sense of belonging, we found that there was a really high sense of belonging this semester that went up a little bit since before the last Screaming Circle. So all of this shows us that while we're not exactly where we wanted to be with having that perfectly welcoming diverse community for our students, we were off to a really good start. Next, we conducted a social media content analysis to give us further insight and information on how we should go about conducting our own social media campaign. Hi, everyone. My name is Katherine Whip. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a part of the research team and also the messaging and publicity team lead for the screening circle. So for our content analysis, we analyzed four JMS platforms. This includes Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And through our findings, we found that Instagram holds the highest engagement rates. Next, we also found that when some, we posted someone from a traditionally marginalized community, again, these engagement rates increase. This tells us that representation matters. When our users see someone that looks like them or someone they identify with with our content, they feel more inclined to engage with us. We also found that when we posted and tagged JMS students, faculty members, and relating organizations, again, these engagement rates increased. After our content analysis, we conducted 18 qualitative interviews. These interviewees range from JMS pre-majors, JMS majors, and current grad students within the School of JMS. So during our interviews, we asked students about their knowledge of JMS events. Almost all interviewees brought up the screening circle. Now keep in mind, prior to our campaign, the screening circle had only been going on for two consecutive semesters. This is huge that our event already has name recognition as one of the main JMS events after only happening for such a short period of time. Interviewees also recognized Dr. Northup's efforts to increase diversity, inclusion, and belonging, and noted that they were seeing an increasingly diverse JMS staff. However, when it comes to the student population, they noted that they still could see an increase in diversity and that we are a bit lacking. Hi, everyone. My name is Sierra Ross. I'm a part of the Student Circles Logistic and Research Team. My pronouns are she, her, and a critical aspect of this year's uh, in-depth research was to do a competitor analysis where we compared the, the screening circle to similar organizations, whether it be at SCSU, at other universities, or within the San Diego community. After doing this research and listening to countless interviews, we found that the screening circle thrives in promoting themselves on social media and also providing various networking opportunities. We did find, however, after listening to interviews, that many people found that the screening circle lacks inclusivity and allyship. And that's why for this year's event, we wanted to make sure that it was a theme. Hi, my name's Garrett Keller. My pronouns are he, him. I'll be going over the issue statement and SWOT analysis. So what is the problem? The problem is that media careers are very hegemonic. People of color make up only 11 to 12% of the workforce in public relations, advertising, and journalism. Besides lacking diversity, this also, also causes a problem for media representation. Where does the School of JMS fit into this? The School of JMS is tasked with recruiting and retaining diverse students in order to try to change this lack of diversity and promote media representation. Moving on to our SWOT analysis, I'd like to start off with our strengths. The biggest strength is that JMS is committed to diversity and inclusion. There's also a commitment to making a safe place for everyone, not just the SDSU community. As far as our weaknesses go, we did notice for the promotion, own media would typically only post a couple weeks before the event, and we feel that could be improved. We also noted that JMS doesn't have a coherent calendar on their website and Canvas, so that could be confusing for students. As far as opportunities go, we noted that a lot of students were very excited to get back to in-person events and start interacting with their community again. We also saw a potential for, for earned media. Moving on to threats, the main threat that we saw was that the LGBTQ community did have a slightly lower sense of belonging compared to their JMS peers. We also noted that some of those same community members had felt unwelcome at previous community events. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Shay Hempeck. My pronouns are she, hers. 
And I am on the messaging and publicity team, and I'm going to be going into a little bit more detail about the planning and messaging that took place to allow our event to be so successful. So as stated, the School of JMS really prides itself on the extensive diversity and inclusion efforts that are being made. Our campaign focused, focused on targeting um, audiences to strengthen aware publics and bring attention to latent publics. The three primary publics that we identified were JMS students, JMS alumni, and JMS faculty, who are all groups of information-seeking individuals, as well as active and aware publics. JMS faculty who attended the event were also able to see their past and present students becoming catalysts for change. Through social media representation and word of mouth, lifelong learners, the LGBTQ community and allies, as well as the San Diego community as a whole, were encouraged to attend and engage in Screening Circle. Our messaging themes played off of the wording of we're here. The three messaging themes that our team thought best conveyed our event are we're still here, getting everyone else here, and keeping everyone here. So the goal of these messaging themes was to really um, emphasize the fact that Screening Circle is a safe space for all individuals and that by attending the event, um, people will learn a lot more about traditionally marginalized communities by listening to the storytellers from those groups. So where do we go from here? My name is Danica and I'm part of the messaging and publicity team. My pronouns are she, her. Our overall goal was to foster a sense of inclusivity and belonging within the community. And we had three major strategies that we used to get us there. Our first strategy was community engagement. Although we had an overall positive sense towards the JMS within JMS students, like they said earlier, a few of them complained about clickiness and a lack of diversity at events, which made them not wanna go. So we wanted to create a very engaging event. So whether you came alone or with a big group of people, you could make relationships and like leave like you had a good time. Our second strategy was cohesive branding. While there was, through our research, we found that there was a large sense of familiarity towards the screening circle. So we wanted to take that logo and integrate it with the branding of We're Here, which is a lot of fun colors, as you guys can see, and LGBTQ plus pride. And we used that continuously throughout the campaign, whether it was on social media posts, on um, flyers or A-frames. We just wanted them to make sure that they knew it was the same event. Our last strategy was promotion. We really wanted to promote the event to traditionally marginalized communities. So we highlighted key messages of diversity and inclusion. We also promoted to traditionally marginalized communities across campus, like the Pride Center and National Association of Hispanic Journalists. Um, we also found in our research that incentives were a huge promotional tactic to use because that's why SDSU students go to the events for free food extra credit, we love all that. So we use that as a major promotional tactic. And we had four main objectives. The first objective was to increase screening circle attendance by 5%. The second objective was to increase social media engagement across all social media channels by 5% by April. Our third objective was to increase positive attitudes towards JMS by 5%. And our last objective was to increase feelings of inclusivity and belonging within JMS by 5%. Now that we've talked about the research and the planning, let's look at what we actually did with implementation. Hello, my name is Noe Sandoval, and my pronouns are he, his, and I, am the, I was the research lead and helped with messaging. To start off, we had a budget, estimated budget of 2000. Uh, we used this budget for drinks, uh, snacks at the event, and most importantly, branding and messaging. Um, and we build around 1,632 hours. Our goal was to increase a sense of belonging. We wanted to empower people as storytellers to be catalysts for change. So how are we gonna do that? Simple, by getting everyone else here. Hi and welcome folks, my name is Abril Sosa Pineda and my pronouns are she, her. So what did we do while we were here? When it came to our event day tactics, this looked like a screening of an episode of We're Here which followed with a panel where participants from this very episode, along with local drag queens, were able to come and share their experiences within the LGBTQ plus community. This then followed a couple of drag performances. Besides that, we had our cornhole, we had our swag, 
we had our Kahoot game, which you guys just saw, which focused on drag, pop culture, and the LGBTQ plus community. And we even had our Faces of JMS mural, which was an ability for, or gave people the opportunity to come and take pictures with their friends and have these very pictures posted on a mural. So that way they could truly see themselves represented within the JMS community. When it came to our promotion, one of the first ways we went about this was by promoting within SDSU. What does this mean? And then reaching out to clubs, affinity groups, RAs, and posting our flyers all over campus. Not just that, but also hosting uncomfortable conversations, which was a post-event activity that was held across all classrooms all over SDSU. When it came to our signs, we relied on our wayfinding, our COVID-19 guidelines, our A-frames, and our marquees to promote this event better. Finally, online, we created many reels and even hashtags such as hashtag you belong, hashtag representation matters, and hashtag storytellers, and even promoted screen and circle via the JMS homeroom page on campus. So now that we're here, let's clarify who we are. The School of JMS is filled with storytellers who come from all walks of life. And we wanted to celebrate that diversity while making everyone feel included within the JMS community. When it came to our branding tactics, they shared many similarities to our event day tactics, such as our cornhole, our step and repeat banner, and our swag, which as you can see, looked as our branded JMS t-shirts and even this lovely screening circle tote bag with LGBTQ plus pins and pronoun pins. When creating these tactics, we wanted it to reflect the event. But not only that, we wanted it to reflect the messaging. Not only are we still here and getting everyone else here, but we're committed to keeping everyone here in order to create a more inclusive community that is committed to having these important discussions. So from those photos, I know many of you were at the event with us, but for those of you that couldn't join us, I hope you can see what a fun event it was with the drag performances, the panel and the screening. And as a JMS student, it was super fun to see not only my fellow students in the school of JMS, but everyone really come together and really benefit from these messages. A lot of people didn't have exposure to especially the drag community before this. And it was really heartwarming to see people really embrace that community with open arms. So just because our event was over, didn't mean our campaign or our message for greater diversity was. Following the event, we shared all the amazing photos and videos we captured at the event that following week on the SDSU JMS Instagram. And we also had our first uncomfortable conversation discussion. Uncomfortable conversations is something our team came up with to make sure that the conversations and messages that were brought up at Screening Circle didn't just end when the event did. So we went into a JMS classroom where we drafted questions not only based on things that were brought about in the show, but common LGBTQ plus issues in general. For example, how do you go about asking someone's preferred pronouns? So we went into these classrooms, started these discussions, showing that this is a safe space to ask these kinds of questions. Sometimes students are curious and they don't know how to go about asking these sometimes touchy topics. So uncomfortable conversations was our way of showing, you know, this conversation is important and it's gonna continue year round and we're allies for life. Diversity and inclusion doesn't just happen one day for an event, true allyship is showing up every day and really taking those messages to heart. And as we get into the evaluation of the event, we're gonna look back at some of our objectives and even at our pre and post survey, post event surveys. Hi everyone, my name is Brett Pickler. I'm a, I'm a member of the research and messaging team. And uh, like I said, in order to get into the first part of the evaluation, we want, we want to check out back on our first objective, which was to increase screening circle attendance by 5% by April. I am happy and thrilled to say that we destroyed this goal by having an increase of 115.15%. This is a huge deal and really, really showed how much the community and campus really wanted to see this um, diversity, equity, and inclusion campaign that we had going on. As you can see by this, before we did the campaign, we had a about 2.77%, not, not percent, on the, live, on the Likert scale, said that they used the services provided by JMS. Post-event, we got that number up to 3.38, which is a significant improvement. Next, knowledge of JMS also increased by a substantial margin. Before, the screen, before our event, it was at 3.22, and following the post-event survey, it raised all the way up to 4.33. Moving on to our second objective, we wanted to increase social media engagement on all platforms by 5%. Once again, we destroyed this objective by raising it by 47.22%. Once again, showing how much this campaign really meant to the students at SDSU. Hi, everyone. My name's Angela. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I was the logistics leads for this campaign. 
So going back to the objectives, objective number three was to increase positive attitude towards JMS by 5% come April. And you might be wondering, how did they do that? Well, yeah, we did. We actually doubled it by, or actually a little bit over double with 10.69%. If you go to the next slide, you can actually see where we were at the beginning to where we are now. We're getting closer and closer to that five and hopefully it'll continue to be that way. And for our last objective, we wanted to increase feelings of JMS as a more diverse and more inclusive program amongst students who take these JMS classes. So we wanted to increase these, this by 5% by April as well. And we were actually able to do it by 8.67%. So amazing results. And as we compare to the next slide, we saw where we were with 4.01 to 4.36. So we already had a high score, but it's good to see it continue to go on the upside. So for pitches, my team and I pitched our little hearts out. We reached out to print, broadcast, and radio media, as well as several podcasts. And through our efforts, we received coverage from the Daily Aztec, PSFA Stories. We were posted on the KPBS event calendar. And we also received social media coverage from KCR, an entertainment journalist from the Los Angeles Times. And of course, we received social media coverage from our lovely panelists, and guests who attended the event. Our team did um, create social media content for the School of JMS. We did so on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And when we did this, we followed four social media pillars. So the first one being, of course, Screening Circle event promotion. Then we um, made content surrounding why media representation matters, ways to improve media representation, and our role as storytellers when we enter the workforce. So we did this, as other people have mentioned, by doing reels, graphics, posting event pictures. And we also carefully curated hashtags to meet these four social media pillars. So our reel with the most engagement ha actually had over 7,000 views, which is amazing. It's the most engagement that JMS has ever received on any of their social media platforms. We also um, got tagged in over 13 posts on story posts for Instagram and we got tagged in over five timeline posts. And then we also saw an, incre an increasing engagement in LinkedIn, which used to be one of our lowest engagement platforms, and now it's actually following Instagram, which is the first. So moving forward, our recommendations for the screening circle center around three pillars, scale, interact, and promote. So first, scale. Screening Circle has already grown so much as we've shown through our campaign, but it has the potential to grow even more. Obviously, we wanna target JMS students, but even more so, we can target students in the entire College of Professional Studies and Fine Arts. Students that are communication and film majors are also really closely tied to the media, so they can greatly benefit from this message of diversity as well. Second, interact. There's a lot of diverse communities that we can shed light on here at the School of JMS but where do we decide which communities to showcase at the screening circle? We recommend that the School of JMS surveys and interacts in classes of students to see what kind of communities they are curious about learning more about. This way, when we are promoting the screening circle you know, and catering to students' desires, we set ourselves up for success by getting the most attendees as possible. And lastly, promote. Through pitching, we learned that time is really of the essence. When promoting screening circle, this is something that should continue year round. You know, earlier going back to the uncomfortable conversations, diversity and inclusion isn't just something that happens once a year. These messages that the School of JMS is bringing up at Screening Circle really have the potential to continue in and out of the classroom year round. Thank you all for coming to listen to our presentation. First, I wanna congratulate my peers on all their hard work. If I can get a round of applause for their hard work. Next, of course, we would like to thank Dr. Sweetser for guiding us to the campaign and always asking our questions, even if it's 12 a.m. <laughs> and thank you to Dr. Northup for not only letting us host an event, but create an insightful campaign that keeps moving the School of JMS forward. So while you're still here, please ask us any questions you may have about the campaign.